we are back again, ladies and gentlemen. I so, guess. thank you very much for still being with us to our second Kingdom Come Deliverance anniversary stream. And I promised you guys that I have different interesting people in the stream today, because usually you only see my walking, uh, the talking head, now you see many more talking heads. And with me today and now is Petr Pekat, Peter. Hey. And Peter is the uh, cinematic lead which means that he and his team are responsible for trailers, cutscenes, everything in-game, uh, video-esque, and they're working with the motion capture as well. And we will talk a little bit about the game, of course, about Kingdom Come Deliverance, the two hours of cutscenes we have or something like that, right? How many did you say? Uh, is it two hours? It's more, right? Uh, it's actually, it's five hours. Five hours, see, five hours of cutscenes. So there's quite uh, a bunch. What's, what uh, difficulties you had with creating cutscenes for in open world games, if there are any specific things. Uh, and the most important question, how, how did you achieve the fact that there people were, as far as I know, not skipping cutscenes, but uh, were watching all of them or most of them. So, Peter, uh, you started at Warhol Studios way later than me. When did you start? What's your story? What's your backstory? How did you get wind of KCD and so on? Yeah, uh, I started about, I think, four years ago. Um, I was creating actual cutscenes uh, before Warhorse at 2K Check. Oh, cool. Uh, for Mafia 3. Oh, cool. Uh, yeah, it was a very like, interesting experience and it was my first experience after school. Uh, right to the gaming industry, creating cutscenes, which was something that I always wanted to do. It was collaboration be be between uh, Hangar 13 and 2K Check. So Hangar 13 was like uh, making the design at the core of the game. Mm -hmm. And in Brno, we were creating the cutscenes animation. Mm -hmm. I think there were some uh, Enveral uh, work as well. Uh, so yeah, so basically I learned how to create a cutscene over there. Mm -hmm. And uh, much uh, time before before I was uh, I got into Warhorse, uh, I actually wrote an email to to Warhorse. Mm -hmm. I'm here. Uh, look at me. Take I will will take me. I want a job. <laughs> I do whatever <laughs> I is do whatever. necessary. Just let me work in your company. <laughs> and it was uh, without any response or with some like uh, cold response. Yeah, maybe later. You know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. But uh, much later, uh, when uh, the project uh, actually started to. Uh, become real mm -hmm. uh, the cinematic lead at the time martin kleckner uh, called me and said hey i read your mail one year uh, one year old <laughs> <laughs> and are you still interested and i was mm -hmm. like hell yeah I'm, I'm still interested so i came i came here i mean to our offices but to prague and uh, yeah we decided to uh, to work together at that time, uh, the cinematic department had only two people, Martin and Katka, the production manager. Mm -hmm. And with me, we were three, and we started uh, from the bottom, from the storyboards, and then created the cutscenes, mm. and uh, other people joined mm. them, and we worked. So you said, you said four years, so it is 2016 then when yeah, you Yeah, it was like end of 2015, but I was still jumping from uh, finishing the work. I at see. 2K I see. And here, so I was. Like, so you were uh, you 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 joined the the office then in the high season when we are really when we are preparing everything for release, right? So uh, we released in 2018, and it yeah. started. Shit went down on on 17. It's throughout starting 17. to uh, yeah. the shit went down. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so uh, that was 17. And uh, your your department did not only do cutscenes for the game, but also trailer. And I have one of the trailers right here, cool. which we might take a look on. It's actually, I think, the most beautiful trailer we have so far. But yeah, or not. Why is it not working? Let me check. Then let's take this one. This one is also great. Our lady appeared. The holy mother of God. She covered the whole city in her cloak. The penitent sinners came out of the city, knelt before the Virgin in prayer, and thanked her. 
for their salvation. But then the city was suddenly engulfed in flames. The earth began to shake and the gate burst open. And the beasts hunted down all the sinners. They sank their fangs into their burning flesh and tore them to pieces mercilessly. And the sinners screamed and tried to flee them. But it was in vain. Just to clarify, Martin Kleckner was doing was the lead cinematic artist back then in the days before uh, and slightly after release. And you then just uh, you, he left the company because he yeah. wanted to pursue his own uh, dreams and projects. And you took over the lead position, so you are now leading the yeah. cinematic department. Uh, and you had great impact on this trailer, right? So yeah, yeah. I I, I don't know if the great impact is the right words, but. Uh, the thing is that uh, the trailers that we are creating, uh, yeah. uh, always one member of the team is actually in charge of the trailer, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, some trailers were made by Martin, some by me, some by other guys. And this trailer that was played right now uh, was actually a little bit by me, but it's always uh, like the group yeah. effort because there are multiple shots that has to be perfected for the trailer. Yeah. So we are dividing the shots between each other and I only edited it together, uh, like came with the concept, uh, with the music and everything and uh, overall managed to uh, uh, do production of the trailer. How is the process of uh, creating a cutscene? Because I mean, you don't come up <coughs> or do you come up with the ideas or is someone from the other departments coming over to your table and say listen Peter we need we have this situation let's say in the DLC 4 with the Inquisitor we have this situation how would you uh, how would you show this to the people or how is the process uh, the process is pretty similar as if you are making movies right you got a screenplay and you have to adapt it uh, it varies from uh, designer to designer because the cutscenes are written by our quest designers but uh, some of them has much clearer, uh, uh, clearer uh, vision, vision of, of the scene, how uh, should it play out, and some less. So it's about the communication, it's about the ideas. Uh, sometimes we are just getting the script and saying, this is great, let's do it, let's do it as the way as, it is, as it's written. And sometimes they are just, you guys, now you have free space to uh, uh, to do it however you want mm -hmm. so it varies but in the end uh, you got a script uh, you've got an idea from the designer you've got some mood or emotion what you uh, what the designer want from the cutscene and we are just trying to accomplish it or add something for our pro profession because uh, because like writing screenplay for cutscene or for movie is very specific specific uh, skills so we are trying to add our cinematography skills or whatever to make the cutscene like uh, better paced or mm. to pinpoint some moments to play with, uh, play with uh, or something did you get to the situation where someone told you or let's say dan for instance i want this particular shot and i need burning blazes of something and then it must rain ash and blah 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 and you then just have to tell him dan listen that's not possible or this will not look good or how's how's the uh, discussion <coughs> working there uh yeah it definitely happens it depends a lot it depends a lot because uh, like our vision is a bit different from the designer's vision some from time to time and um uh, it's a discussion, uh, you know, uh, I like this shot, mm -hmm. but we like this shot better because of this, of this, of this. And yes. sometimes we've got like valid arguments why this shot is not working or is working yes. or the variation of the shot is better. Uh, so, for example, we've done this, uh, Dan likes this shot, he likes this shot, there is a discussion and then it's uh, Dan's solution in the end. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> You discuss and in the end Dan decides. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, there is definitely a discussion and in the end it's a compromise of both because we all want to be uh, the cutscene to be entertaining and cinematic and informative and everything. Uh, the cutscenes in Kingdom Come are 
uh, mostly mostly traits for a player. So mm. we want to have it as a trait, not just as g some generic cutscenes that is telling you some information you need to know for the gameplay. And what about chat? What kind? What what cutscenes do you have in mind? Do you, which cutscenes did you like? Do you have any anyone in any in particular you that stand out to you that? I don't know, touched your feels or that was super action? Uh, I've got several favorite cutscenes for several reasons. Uh, <clears throat> for example, in the Kingdom Come, mm -hmm. in the main game, mm -hmm. the uh, cutscene of uh, Skull is being burned down and attacked by the human army. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like the most bombastic and epic cutscene we have. Yeah. It was completely run by Martin. I still admire his his uh, oh, yeah, with the workaholism, how he achieved it. I with the burning remember. arrows flying. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It was impossible to do. Or if, if you have to you have to know Sorry. that our uh, mock-up yeah. stage is like really small or yeah. boss in the yeah. offices. Yeah. And we had to accomplish this cutscene like in this mock-up that had five times six meters. This a huge army attack. Yeah. It was but almost an impossible yeah. task. But mm -hmm. uh, in the end, it's like really epic and I really love this cutscene. How about we talk about the different, the, the way how, how a cutscene is, is created. Oh, first of all, I will not drop this, I will put this in the horse. This was the better idea because we can sell it later. How do you uh, create a cutscene if you can uh, say it in this, this easy way? And I think we have also something prepared, right? Yeah. Um, as, I, as I said, uh, the production is, of cutscene is pretty similar to movie production or maybe mm -hmm. uh, much more similar to animated movie production. Yeah. Uh, we are starting from the screenplay, we are preparing in the pre-productions in the pre-production some pre-visualizations, storyboards, mm -hmm. animatics, some concepts of how the scene will play out. This is the example of the storyboards uh, from the scene as I uh, said before, the sacking of Scarlets. This was actually uh, created by Martin, for, by the former cinematic lead. So. So we got the script, we've got, we know how the cutscene plays out and we are trying to uh, visualize the situation. So, for example, we are creating uh, storyboards like this. Or if you can draw, like me, because my, my uh, drawing skills are limited to the stick figures uh, with uh -huh. uh, big heads and like, <laughs> taunting. The yeah. We are using the actual game engine and uh, creating the shots in the engine with the uh, existing uh, characters mm. and animations so that's, a, that's a shot from the band of bastards yeah, right but i can see that this bastards. is very early stage where you have just some random people on a horse yeah, right? yeah exactly and uh, the characters isn't done so for example kuno is here played by uh Wojta or uh, mm. in the game uh, the yeah. uh, hans i can recall the, the name of the of the guy yeah the huntsman in the tarnberg uh yeah so we are using whatever whatever you have mm -hmm. and uh trying to visual, visualize the, the mm -hmm. cutscene, how it plays out, what moments work, what doesn't. Mm -hmm. After that, when this is settled, we are going to mock up motion capture. Um, as I said before, our motion capture was very small. Here's the example how the preparation for the motion capture uh, is. And you can see that this is the place, the action area that we are uh, able to operate. Mm. And to create like large scale battle here is really, really yes. complicated. In this limited space, we have to like divide the cutscene uh, into uh, some smaller scenes and then putting it back together. So, so here you can see this all is one scene, but it's all different set of characters and, and uh, places or anything. And then in the end, we are putting it all together. Uh, I prepared some. In, mm, for example, cool. you can see how we were forced to improvise uh, during the Kingdom Come, uh, Kingdom Come production. For example, this is, uh, I don't know if you can uh, recognize what this is, but this yeah. is actually Tamburg Wars. So that's my favorite cutscene then? Yeah, not, not the Tamburg Wars from the oh. morning surprise, but yeah. from the night surprise when, uh, Ratzik, when Kogla, Ratzik is coming with yeah, his crew. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you can see that we recreated uh, the most realistically as we could the, the walls themselves. And there's Tom McKay in the back. There's uh -huh. Tom McKay in the back, yeah. yeah. And uh, uh, here, here's Michael Pidham. Pidham Michael Pidham, Pidham yeah. Uh, yeah. Which is, which is oh, playing, uh, is playing Ratzik, Ratzik character. Oh no, you can leave the sound oh, okay. on, that's okay. quite okay. interesting. Start from the beginning. And let, let them, let them see. 
let them see that's that's cool i mean that's the things you don't see that often i guess yeah and i, I said them much too often yeah. sorry no way you yeah i mean in general not many of offices are sharing there yeah uh, and you can see or you can't see but in the end uh, the character of Ratzik is actually about 20 meters below them mm -hmm. and they are 20 meters above them above yeah. Ratzik so they have to play out that he's looking uh, upwards to, for uh, to the characters they are looking downwards they have to shout to each other because there's a Ryan er a river mm -hmm. and it's uh, really a stretch for the actors because they have to fantasize all this and to get into the role yes sir he is right here it's pretty long dialogue, we don't need to see it all. Uh, another interesting thing, if you I can... Yeah, sure. Them, but you can, you can leave it. Uh, you can exactly is uh, that we weren't capturing the the performance, right? The mm -hmm. performance of the of the, yeah. of the face. So uh, we uh, did some improvisation. And as you can see, uh, the paper side here yeah. is the actual text. <laughs> <laughs> so so when we have uh, more text that the uh, that the characters uh, have to handle yeah. because the scene is very long. There's a really yeah. large amount of text, and we have to, we want to have it as uh, fast as we can. Uh, they actually have in their field of vision the text printed uh, mostly in the in the angle that the character should be looking, right? Yes. So it plays out in the end very well, and, and still the, the actor has the comfort to, comfort to uh, speak freely and focus on. His and that's very clever because you cannot see those uh, papers in any video or whatever, right? Yeah. So. Yeah. What else do you have prepared for us? So this is how it looks in the in the motion capture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I can see in the other video T pose in on the entire world when the animations crap out and the character doesn't know what to do or whatever. A very usual bug yeah. is the T pose bug that the characters are standing in T pose. What is T pose and why do they do that? But the T pose is marking the start and the end of the take. Mm -hmm. It's like. You can immediately see that the uh, take is st starting or ending, mm -hmm. and it serves as well uh, as a pose where the cameras around the, around the mm -hmm. motion capture can clearly see all the markers that are at, uh, at the bodysuit. So uh, it mainly serves to these two purposes, mm -hmm. and it's kind of a starting pose of the animation when the actual record button is being. So, or that they're confused of something, then they go into default position, which is the yeah. T-pose. And uh, it is possible Uriya that. Gnu says at least they're not dabbing, that's right. <laughs> at least they, they um, we may include it later. <laughs> <laughs> no, we won't. Does anyone knows what scene this might be? It's I... from Bastards, this band of Bastards. Exactly, true. So we right. have on the left, we have Kuno and the actor of Kuno. And on the right, here in the middle, is what was his name? Sir von Zul uh, or something? Hagen, Hagen Zul? Hagen Zul, yeah. So we can, you can see the glimpse, how we imagined it, how we wanted it to look, and how we prepared for it. Um, don't and skip did it. Don't skip yeah. too much. So in the end, so they were standing one meter in front of each other, and then in the final. Yeah. Final form. That's also the magic of cutscenes, I think, the, the, or the big advantage uh, you have to m movie. You are God Almighty and can place the cameras wherever you want. The, the characters can basically walk however they want, whenever they want. But when there's some situation, for example, that we want the character to be in the detailed shot, in the mm -hmm. uh, in the long sh in the detailed frame, yeah, like this, uh, yeah. like this, exactly. So you have to uh, tell him right now at this moment, at this line, you don't, uh, you must not move because we will have, have you framed in I this see. tight shot. So you need to know. So before. there are some restriction that we have to know before because yeah. if it will be moving around. Uh, the shot will be ruined and yes. we have to figure something else but we really want the tight shot in this situation because he's seen something important or yeah. emotional or something Understand. so in one uh, in, so uh, yes they are free to go however mm -hmm. they want but in the same time uh, we have uh, to uh, know yeah. the actual actual uh, completion of the mm -hmm. shots in our head when we are shooting so we can tell them move don't move move like this way or mm -hmm. something some scenes are uh, more free to improvise and some are like very mm -hmm. tight for improvisation so yeah. i don't want to dive uh, too deep into the process but um uh, as i uh, as i said we are um, 
dividing the scene into mm -hmm. individual scenes and then competing to, together. So here's for example, example of oh, how this cool. scene is uh, actually put together, right? On chairs. This, yeah, <laughs> we don't, yeah. Uh, we do not have space for a horse. <laughs> okay. Tell us why they are looking so funny there on the top left. You mean here? Yes. Yeah, um, the reason is that we are animating or our animation department is animating the cutscenes in a mm -hmm. program called Motion Builder. Mm -hmm. So we are preparing uh, the edited scene in this Motion Builder. And mm -hmm. this is actually the default models of the characters. Yeah, this is uh, how we can see that the cutscene is actually put together because this is, I think, three or four different, or oh, only two different uh, scenes, but mm -hmm. uh, they are put together right here. So mm -hmm. we can see the actual synchronized reference videos with the, with the actual scene in the end. Uh, recorded with multiple, multiple actors. Ah, so I see. So you have one scene in which, in which different things are happening. Yeah. Different packs of people are doing something. Yeah, yeah. And you, you, you record them separately and then put them together in yeah. one scene. I yeah. understand. So, uh, for example, this scene was recorded separately. This scene was recorded separately. Uh -huh. All the situations are recorded separately and has to be prepared that they could be uh, recorded separately. That means limited interactions or something, mm. uh, which we had to which we, which we had to work through. Oh, that's interesting. But then and again, this, this is, is the... especially sorry. This is especially yeah. difficult because this is one shot, uh, one shot uh, scene. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, but then again, that's the uh, um, that, that, that's the advantage of motion capture again. Yeah. That un unlike in movies, you have to put it all together because you cannot. Yeah. Unlike you do some crazy it may magic, be, but it may be like uh, more easy to put them together or record them in uh -huh. the actual uh, actual like river creek. Uh -huh. um, but uh, we have opportunity if we kind of mess some timing up. Mm -hmm. We can uh, repair it here and move some action in the background a bit further or sooner before mm -hmm. we like it, so we can uh, play with the pacing a bit more. Uh, cool. This is one of the great like uh, pluses of the motion capture. Is mm. there anything that strikes your mind as the one thing that will forever stay in your yeah. head? Can be whatever if you think about now. Yeah, I'm thinking. Yeah. Um, Overall, I really like the you know, environment. Um, yeah, you don't like it? I like. So I, I said I didn't. I, I liked. I, I liked it very much. Um, also because I'm from the Czech Republic and I like uh, going around in nature, right? And, and that's uh, very good. Okay, so so the world striked you, right? So yeah, and I like it because I've got a really authentic Czech nature vibe from it. I was actually in the area. Uh, I walked through the areas where the game plays out, mm -hmm. and it's like really, really insanely close to the actual feeling of the place that uh, in the game and in the in the real place uh, in the actual like, mm -hmm. Sasa uh, River and around it. So this is the part which I really like. I know every cutscene from down to bottom, right? Mm -hmm. right? Uh, but I didn't know the quest around it. So I first, for the first time in my life, I actually played the quests where mm -hmm. there were no cutscenes. And I was really surprised how like, original they were written. And even the simplest quests are really funny and uh, laughing mm -hmm, more mm -hmm. than, I, than I should uh, sometimes. <laughs> yeah, and for example, I really loved Sazao uh, Monastery quest. <laughs> yeah. That's that's uh, but maybe it was because I knew what I had to do, so I just kind of screw around. But I like the sudden change of pace and atmosphere yeah. and uh, the uh, actual religious and Christian um, yeah. fear from the, from the, from the quest. Uh, what about Teresa Romance scene? So he's probably asking about the sex scene, how this yeah. was shot um, <laughs> or made. Um, I'm not sure if I was actually at the at the stage at uh, at, at the recording, but uh, from what I can remember, uh, from the reference or anything, um, it is quite intimate scene. Uh, of course, it's really complicated. It's really hard for actors to play uh, to perform uh, this kind of intimate scene, right? Mm -hmm. So it was all about. Uh, getting actors comfortable. The chemistry between uh, Tom and Victoria was actually pretty great. So uh, they Tom were McKay great together. And, uh, Tom, Tom McKay and Victoria Hogan. Yeah. Tom McKay is the actor of Henry and, to and Victoria yeah. Hogan the actor of 
Teresa. So they had uh, from the start this really natural chemistry between them, uh, and it was just about making them comfortable. There are there were no uh, there were not many people on the stage, so uh, they don't feel like inappropriate or something. Our cutscenes are relatively famous, I must say, because many people are not skipping, which is usually in many games you skip the cutscenes and then uh, you just don't care for it. How do you make sure that this happens? Is there, is it just because you made them good or is there just some um, special magic you have to add or something? I think... Um, the main reason is that most of the cutscenes are really well written. Mm -hmm. The dialogue is like snappy, uh, humor, hum, humor, humorous, uh -huh. yeah, humorous, funny, yes. yeah, yeah, funny, uh -huh. and um, pretty interesting. The characters have like strong outlines. You know who is who. They are very interesting. And we are like what I wanted to say that is that we are working with a really nice, great screenplays. Mm -hmm. And uh, what we are doing is to help, uh, for example, if the dialogue is too long, it's interesting, mm -hmm. but it's too long, we can help it with uh, some kind of changing of the pace for something, uh, for, for, for example. Uh, I can remember one moment in the Scalis, uh, the German character and uh, some Alish or some character is arguing about Zygmunt and Václav and everything and the dialogue was uh, a bit longer than maybe uh, it should be so we are at some interesting shot for example some mm -hmm. some situation we pinpoint some some uh, moment some line just to change the pace of the scene uh, or some shenanigans like mm -hmm. when the uh, when the German uh, slaps the table. There's the shot where the chicken is actually uh, frightened by the by the by the by the hit and mm -hmm. flies away. It's like nonsense, but it helps it helps uh, to make the scene interesting and not like monotone, right? Yes. Oh no! I think no, not again! Did you say this time? No, of course not. I think you are doing this on purpose. Right? I do this on purpose because <laughs> it's always at the end of the stream. Ah. And it doesn't matter. Thank you very much, Peter, for joining the stream. Uh, for Look out for the magic. See you in a second.